Hi everyone and welcome back to the Embedded Dude. In the previous video I compared the power consumption of Wi-Fi 6 with individual target wake time plus auto light sleep with a deep sleep approach. In this video I have shown that using individual target wake time plus auto light sleep can be more power efficient than using a deep sleep approach. Today's video is a part 2 to add how ESP now performs against the other methods. So let's get into it. A quick sponsorship statement. All tools and equipment you see in today's video have been purchased by me with my own money and are not in any way sponsored by anyone. I'm also not getting paid or getting products or services in exchange for my opinions and thoughts in this video. In the last video I compared the power consumption of Wi-Fi 6 individual target wake time plus auto light sleep with the deep sleep approach. The power consumption for a device that periodically reports sensor data via MQTT could be reduced up to 68% using individual target wake time and auto light sleep. I got a comment under that video that it would be nice to add ESP now to the comparison and I actually liked the idea and I did it. So thank you for the comment. So this video today can be seen as a part 2 of the previous video with ESP now added to the comparison. ESP now is not a power saving mode, but a protocol developed by Espressive for low power applications using the Wi-Fi radio. Looking at ESP now, it is expected to be more power efficient with some disadvantages compared to Wi-Fi and MQTT. So let's take a closer look at the application. As in the previous video, we are simulating a battery operated device. In between the reporting intervals, the device is sleeping to conserve battery power. We are using Wi Fi to report temperature, humidity, and light information, which we are reading from sensors. We are comparing using MQTT and ESP Now to provide the data to the user. Using MQTT, the data flow looks like this. The ESP32C6 collects the data from the sensors via I2C. It connects as a station to a Wi Fi access point. It then connects to the MQTT broker and publishes the data. With an MQTT Explorer, I can connect to the MQTT broker and subscribe to the topics and receive the data. In comparison, the ESP Now setup looks like this. Again, we have our ESP32 collecting data from the sensors via I2C. Instead of connecting to a Wi Fi access point, the ESP32C6 is now using ESP Now, which requires a second ESP microcontroller to receive the messages. Via a serial terminal, I'm connecting to the second ESP32 to read the data. If we wanted to send the ESP Now data to an MQTT broker, the second ESP32 would need to be configured as a bridge to connect to an access point and to receive ESP Now data, and then to translate the ESP Now data to MQTT and vice versa. But that is a topic for another video. ESP Now is, as far as I am informed, a proprietary protocol, so you cannot use it with your standard Wi Fi infrastructure at home. ESP Now has a clear advantage to the previous setup with ESP32 configured as a station and using MQTT. ESP Now is a connectionless protocol with significant less overhead compared to a standard station access point, Wi Fi setup, and MQTT. The disadvantage is that you as a user need to implement additional mechanisms on top of ESP Now if you require things like message acknowledgements. ESP Now is basically a fire and forget mechanism, where the sender sends the data without knowing if there's a receiver. ESP Now supports encryption of frames using pre shared local keys. Furthermore, it's possible to add paired devices, but this still does not guarantee any message delivery since the protocol is kept simple and lightweight. I think it became clear that there is a clear difference between ESP Now and Wi Fi plus MQTT. It's not my intention to do an in depth comparison of the two technologies. 
Also, this is not supposed to be an ESP Now tutorial or explanation. There are plenty of videos on YouTube explaining in detail what ESP Now is and what it can do. It's clear that we are not comparing apples to apples here, so there is not a winner or loser in this comparison. However, I hope that the power consumption results will help you choosing the right technology for your application. Next, let's have a quick look at the hardware and measuring setup. In the previous video, I have shown the hardware and measurement setup, and it remains unchanged to ensure that we can compare the measurement results. One important note, to get the same results that I get with the ESP32C6 dev kit, it is important to connect the 3.3V to the ESP32C6 dev kit as shown in the picture. This is to ensure that only the room module gets powered and not the rest of the board. Another important part is the power switch to turn the power to the sensors on and off to ensure they are powered off during sleep times. I'm using two MOSFETs to do that, which are not shown here. Next, let's have a look at the software state machine that got slightly changed to also handle ESP now. So let's have a look at the software state machine. I have slightly modified it to incorporate the ESP now states. Let's have a quick look and recap of the state machine as it was before. We are starting with the boot. After the boot, we are initializing the system, hardware, sensors, etc. And then we are trying to connect. We are starting the Wi-Fi module and trying to connect to an access point. Once that is done, we are trying to connect to the backend via MQTT. Once we have an MQTT connection, we are reading the sensors, we are publishing the data, and then we are entering sleep mode. Depending which sleep mode we are entering, we either wake up from a deep sleep, going through the boot sequence again, or we are waking up uh, out, out of an auto light sleep, and we are going into the Wi-Fi connected state again. So now, how does it look with ESP now? With ESP now, after we have initialized the system, we are going right into the ESP now init state. There, we are initializing ESP now, starting the Wi-Fi module. Then we are reading the data from the sensors. We are sending this data as fire and forget. And then we're entering the sleep mode. Here we can enter deep sleep or light sleep. If we are going into a light sleep, we are disabling uh, ESP now and Wi-Fi. After waking up from light sleep, we are going right back into the ESP now init state. If we are waking up from a deep sleep, we are going right back into the boot sequence. Obviously, using the light sleep should save some power. So next, let's look at the measurements. Quickly recapping on the deep sleep versus uh, individual target wake time power consumption. Here we can see the power consumption for a reporting intervals from 30 seconds to 900 seconds, where individual target wake time is clearly below the deep sleep approach. The dark green line is the calculated values because if you remember or you've seen the previous video, my access point is deauthenticating the individual target wait time devices after 300 seconds. Looking at longer reporting intervals from 15 minutes to 90 minutes, we can see that at around 60 minutes, the deep sleep approach should be more power efficient than individual target wait time. The reason for being so power efficient when using out to light sleep plus individual target wait time is the reduced on time when reporting. With the deep sleep, we are going through the boot sequence, which could be optimized by not actually checking the flash, but in our case, I have left everything to standard settings. So it takes around 2.1 seconds for deep sleep and 907 milliseconds for the auto light sleep plus individual target wake time to send the report and going back to sleep. So this is the main reason why it is more power efficient to use auto light sleep and individual target wake time. So how is ESP now comparing to deep sleep and auto light sleep with individual target wake time? Let's look at the measurements. I am measuring ESP now with deep sleep now uh, using a 30 second reporting interval. As you can see, we are in deep sleep now consuming around 8.7 micrograms. On the right hand side is my uh, terminal reading the data over the UART 
once the device wakes up and has sent the data to the second device. So this is the UART from the second device picking up the ESP now messages. Here is the report. And we're consuming 2.73 milliamps in average over 30 seconds. Zooming in on the report itself. You can see it takes around um, 1.391 seconds for waking up from deep sleep, reporting and going back to sleep. Okay, now we are measuring ESP now with light sleep, still a 30 second reporting interval. We are in light sleep right now and consuming around 40.3 micrograms. Of course, higher than in deep sleep, that is to be expected. And we are again seeing on the right hand side, the second ESP now device picking up the, the data once it's sent. So now we see the report and we can see 1.07 milliamps in average over 30 seconds. So already lower than the deep sleep, as expected. And uh, zooming in on where we woke up and reported, um, we can see it's, it took 935 milliseconds to wake up, report, and go back to sleep. So next, let's have a look how this looks in the graph with several reporting intervals compared to each other. So here we have the ESP now deep sleep and light sleep graphs with reporting intervals from 30 seconds to 15 minutes. It is no surprise that the light sleep has an advantage since it does not need to go through the full boot sequence compared to the deep sleep approach. The really interesting part is coming next comparing ESP now to normal deep sleep and individual target wake time. Adding in deep sleep and individual target wake time with auto light sleep. To not make this graph too busy, let's start by comparing reporting intervals from 30 seconds to 180 seconds. ESP now with light sleep is clearly the winner when it comes to the lowest power consumption. Reporting every 60 seconds consumes 545 microamps using ESP now with light sleep and almost double the power when using individual target wake time. Comparing the deep sleep scenarios with each other, then ESP now with deep sleep is clearly winning against deep sleep with MQTT, but that is no surprise. Let's see how it looks for longer reporting intervals. The picture remains the same for reporting intervals from 240 to 900 seconds. However, the gaps are getting significantly smaller. With 900 seconds or 15 minutes reporting intervals, both individual target wake time and ESP now with light sleep are using below 90 microamps. The longer the reporting intervals get, the more impact the sleep current has on the overall power consumption. With deep sleep being around 8 to 9 microamps, the deep sleep curves at some point have to be the lowest. So finally, let's look at even longer reporting intervals. Here we are looking at reporting intervals from 15 to 90 minutes. At around 20 minute reporting interval, ESP now with deep sleep is already at the same level as individual target wake time. And with 30 minutes reporting intervals, ESP now with deep sleep is also below ESP now with light sleep individual target wake time and ESP now with light sleep are coming closer to each other due to the sleep current playing a bigger role in the overall power consumption. So what is my conclusion? ESP now is a more simple lightweight protocol consuming less power compared to individual target wake time and simple deep sleep. Individual target wake time with auto light sleep gets closer the longer the reporting intervals get. Above 180 seconds, in my example, they are getting much closer to each other.
ESP now does not work with your standard Wi-Fi infrastructure. It's a proprietary protocol from Espressif. Keep in mind that you require a second device to pick up the ESP now messages. Individual target break time is not very well supported yet. If anyone seeing this video that knows of an affordable home router or access point that supports individual target wake time sleep periods beyond 10 minutes, please send me a message. Again, there is no winner or loser here. Which technology you choose depends on your application and needs. If you are interested in the source code, then you can find a link in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you. If you like that type of content, then please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.